And our first story, former President John Jamani Mahama has blamed the Finance Minister Ken Foyata for the country's economic woes. Now, according to him, the President's seeming inability to remove Mr Foyata from office is making the situation worse. Speaking at a lecture on the economy on Thursday, he stressed that the incompetence of the sector minister and the entire Akufado regime account for the depreciation of the CD and the other economic challenges plaguing the country. Amis Boosful claims that they were the best managers of the economy. Immediately after the elections, it became clear that we had been thrown into a bottomless pit of debt round our necks, staggering budget deficits, and a rapidly deteriorating fiscal position. The looming disaster at the time required an urgent response. And even as the crisis deepened, earlier this year, we in NDC besieged government with many prescriptions, which are articulated in the Ghana at the Crossroads speech in May this year. And I urge government to seek multilateral assistance urgently. Among others, I also called on President Akufuado to expeditiously convene a national dialogue on the economy, at which the best and brightest minds of our nation would be brought together to huddle and formulate a robust response to the challenges confronting us. I guess that is too late now. I re-echo demands by Ghanaians that the finance minister and the chair of the economic management team who have been primarily responsible for this economic catastrophe should be relieved of their positions to breed confidence among stakeholders and offer the economy a new lease of life. I ask the president to deploy some of the arsenals from the presidential toolkit and reshuffle his government to inject innovation and freshness of thinking into the running of the country. I also ask that the president address the nation to inform the public about the specific steps that he was intending to take to turn the condition around. This address was meant to calm the anxiety of the investor community and rally Ghanaians behind any such effort that he was willing to take. Regrettably, the president dug in and failed to do any of these suggestions. Let me note that since this event was advertised last weekend, I have been made aware that the president intends to address the nation sometime over this weekend. It is my prayer that his words would strike the right chords in the hearts of Ghanaians. Since my speech in May, the situation has spiraled out of control and the effects have been calamitous for all of us. There is a temptation to say, I told you so, and that temptation is very strong. But we do not believe that this is the time for vainglorious pursuit of vindication. And neither is there room for gloating over the current predicament. John Mahama says he hopes President Akufado's words and his upcoming address to the nation would bring some sort of relief to Ghanaians amidst the current economic hardship. He said the current economic situation does not warrant the president to be engaging in glorious, in vain glorious pursuit of uh, vindication. He reiterated that the country's challenges are domestically driven. The economic woes have been felt in the pockets of Ghanaians, compelling people to urge the president to fix the country. The biggest blame for the current tragic situation in which we find ourselves lies with the very people charged with managing the country and not with the pandemic, not with any war in any country, as has been unprofessionally posited. And Ghana has been treated 
as an experimental playground or a family heirloom. And I regret to say this was all avoidable. Things could have been different. And I remain very convinced that they could have been different. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to restate what I have said over the years. We are ever ready and willing to share pragmatic steps that will help put our nation back on track. <laughs> ideally, ideally, in situations like this, backroom channels of communications should exist between the ruling party and the opposition to allow for exchange of views on important matters of national interest on the benefit, to the benefit of Ghanaians. Unfortunately, that has not been the case under this government, for which reason we in NDC are compelled on almost all occasions to engage the people of Ghana directly on some of the things we believe ought to be done to mitigate the untold suffering of our people and get our economy back on track. Even though government has requested for an IMF program, the lateness of the decision and the extent of economic decay means that an early approval of a fund program could prove elusive. It may take a couple of more months before an agreement is reached on a program between Ghana and the fund. In the meantime, there's the need to stem the rapid decline in the economy and reduce the unbearable hardships Ghanaians are going through. Meanwhile, the minority is predicting an even harsher economic climate that will span at least the next four years. Minority spokesperson on finance, Kassil Atufosan, said government will need at least 200 billion CDs to fix the situation. He also warned government to resist the urge to restructure only its local debts. 8% of primary surplus every year for four years. So colleagues, Ghana should brace for serious austerity in the coming years for the next four years or more. The mess they have met, they have created, is said like that they will leave office and it will, their shadow will follow any government that comes after them. Commercial lenders and others will have to accept a reduction in interest and principal payment or risk default or non-payment. So the question is, you accept the haircut, no matter how bad it is, it doesn't matter whether you get ugly, because obviously, if you don't accept it, then there will be non-payment. So I would prefer to be ugly than not to get my money at all, because I will starve to die. You make your debt sustainable by doing all what you, it takes to get debt relief of 200 billion Ghana cities and to bring it to 55% of GDP. The board will not sit and you will not get a dime from the IMF. And I repeat, you will not get a dime from the IMF. Within 20 years, Ghana is moving from heavily indebted poor country, EPIC, to sovereign insolvency stress. So the problem now is no longer EPIC. We are in SIS, sovereign insolvency stress. We in the minority recommend a set of policy options for government and we demand, we demand urgent consideration. This country belongs to all of us. Number one, curbing inflation should be the top priority. Ghana does not want inflation to be entrenched. We need to confront inflation now. Dr. Stephen Amwai is a member of Parliament's Finance Committee and he joins us on this. Doc, good morning and thank you so much for your time. Dr. Amwa, good morning. Thank you so much for your time. Good morning. Um, it's a big pleasure having me on your platform. Now, uh, do you agree with um, former President Mohammed's general assessment of the economy as like one in distress caused not by external factors, but rather by mismanagement on part of government? <laughs> um, my regards to our listeners, I will be with this very morning. Um, I think 
I think um, as a country, one of the challenges we are having is the fact that people place premium on their individual and group interests more than the, the social interests of the people. Mm -hmm. And this has destroyed our country over the years, not only under one region. How can a former president, His Excellency John Dramani Mahama, respectfully, please, mm -hmm. I, mean, I respect him so much, mm -hmm. say that today's economic challenges basically have got nothing to do with a global crisis. And the very economy that we are in depends on these developed economies. That as I'm talking to you right now, I'm not comparing Ghana to any country. Mm. That's the mistake people make. Because different countries have different dynamics. So you can only compare a company to industry performance, a country to global performance. Yeah. But I will make this statement because we depend on them. So the analysis is that if I depend on UK's economy mm -hmm. and US economy and post-COVID, inflation rate is about 400%. What will happen to mine? Let's be very honest with ourselves. Yeah. What will happen to mine? Yeah. Have we had a situation as a country that we had about 22 months impaired productivity? Segments of this time were even asked to stay home, not to go anywhere. Mm. Beyond that, 10 people going to work, only 5 will stay, 5 will work within, within a month. Yeah. We've gone through all this, revenue shortfalls. Things are hard everywhere. So he should have situated this in this context before maybe want to list one or two things that, oh, government also did this wrong, government did that wrong, this is the way forward. I, I'm trying hard not to do politics, but my sister, if we want to do politics, even 2016, that we are not going through this global audio. Mm -hmm. GDP today is higher than what they handed over to us. Reserve today is about 6.6, .6, even though it has been reduced. It's still bigger than 5.8 billion under this regime. Mm. Even interest rate, which is 33, is still lower than their regime, which was 37. So let's, let's deal away with this NPP MP, recycling issues. When they were there, who do the same thing? When they are there, we should stop for one as a country. If former president Mahama really mean well for this country, he will just accumulate the fact that, oh, over the years, the use of fuel, the use of exchange rate, we've been recycling the blame staff. Mm. Me, I'm coming back. I think I'm not interested in that. This is what we did wrong. NPP is doing the same thing. I think I want to move further. Then I can trust him. But what do you think? I'm surprised. All oh, the solutions he actually tried to bring out. It means if I use the thing that me, it means me here. All of us have been talking about size of government, corruption, this, that. That's all of us who've been talking every time, and we are still having the problem. The fact is, the economy of this country is not very resilient, chronically or ritually. Uh -huh. so when there's a small shake in the world, it affects us because we depend on them. Then we can accept this, then try to begin short term. What can we do? I, for one, as the one, if I had my discretion, all land cruises, both finance, fuel, maintained by government, should be packed yeah. as a matter of urgency. So if you are driving outside Accra, maybe you can use it, interagent. But if you are going to work, don't use any car whose engine is beyond 2.0 liters. Then, secondly, all state workshops and seminars should not be done outside Accra. So we should cancel all those now. We should do them in Accra. Thirdly, Every discretionary spending variable in our budget, yeah. whose correlation <coughs> with our GDP mm. is not remarkable. We should remove all of them instantly as a matter of agency. Third, fourthly, all state institutions within two years, we can build skyscrapers. Dubai, during the expo, they used two years to build, I mean, skyscrapers that were having 100 floors on the sea. Yeah. Government can move all state institutions and agencies into two skyscrapers, the whole of us who can be given up for global development, financial help, I mean, no tax, tax free, and then we develop. We don't build less than 40 floors. We should take this, this and then we have to merge some of the state institutions because they seem to be doing the same thing. These are in the short term, maybe in three years, by three years, we shouldn't import any agricultural produce in Ghana yet. We can within three years. So, so Doc, because cannot do it. Yeah, Doc, I hear your solutions and your suggestions, but how will it solve the uh, current economic uh, challenges that we're facing immediately? Oh, 
Over them immediately after, after even in our budget, sometimes the confidence of the people. If today Ghanaians are aware that hey, now all state institutions land cruises are packed. Okay. Now they are not going to Sinchi again. They start building domestic confidence. Who will go down, go up to the world? Secondly, we know that oh, all expenditures on variables that are not impact, we cut all of them in our budget today. Then Ghanaians will begin to think that hmm, now government so, so, also was, meet the uh, the uh, those who repatriate their funds uh -huh. after the because they repatriate millions of dollars every month. So why hasn't this been done all along? Did we have to wait to get to Madame, this current economic... Madam, you ask me, I'm giving my professional advice. If sure, you ask all me, right. Do you want to tell me that you're FM? I'm not saying government is not. Government is also working. We have different alternatives to attaining all goals in this world. Somebody will prefer this. Another person will prefer this. Except that some alternatives are better than others. Okay. Even my, somebody might have more superior alternatives than mine. Yes. Sometimes they are doing it, but maybe they are not aware because even Joy FM that you are, there are certain things that could be done or that are being done by management that probably you don't, they are not privy. They call that asymmetric information management. All right. I think that we need to do things instantly to rebuild confidence of Ghanaians and also cut down a lot of things because at the same time, institutions must be merged in Ghana here. That's my opinion instantly. All right, so Doc, because if we pack, we mm -hmm. pack land cruises. Do you know? Do you know how much is going to save us a month? How much fuel do you buy for each land cruiser? How much repair cost does it cost us? Yeah. Depreciation cost. If you go to Saint Chay and other places within every three months, three institutions, do you know how much it cost us? So these are all going to put back confidence in the Ghanaian market and in the minds of investors, and that will go up there. Sure. Then we plan the long term. Yeah. I'm sure something can be done. And the repatriation of foreign currencies, we need to, as a country, and we also quickly have to redefine our economic uh, focus by running mixed market economy, not absolute free market economy, because cartel, oligopoly, and then monopoly are also destroying us because of profiteering domestically. Sure. We need to. And the government will also cut down government's own expenditure internally. I'm sure it will help us. Well, uh, Dr. Amor, in your opinion, with your professional advice and your wonderful suggestions, do you think the finance minister should go? That, I don't want to dwell on that because my position is that mm -hmm. we have been able to resolve it. I can't come out as a single person to speak on this issue, I beg you. But what I think is that the first three years, he was the same finance minister. Our inflation rate was hovering around 7.3%. Uh -huh. GDP per year for three years was 7%. Mm -hmm. Reserve have moved from 5.8 to about 7.4. Interest rate has been reduced from almost 40% to 20%. Policy rate has been reduced from about 25.5 to about 12.5. Things were going on well. And then this whole Ukraine, this thing came in. So it will be me, it will be very difficult on my part to say that we are attributing our problem to date. Maybe the other pieces of information I don't know. But, but there's some course, enough 95 uh, NPP um, MPs who believe that the finance minister should go. So it's so not just one, on your part, some 95 My interest MPs. now is to concentrate on the economy. I beg you, I, I know where you are going, what you want to do. But I, I, I'm I, not going anywhere, I'm just asking you a question that's on a lot of Ghanaians' minds. I think that... The two things are important to me now. Uh -huh. What are the causes of our situation? What is the way forward? And I think I have given what I can and what I understand. Okay. Somebody should go or not go. It's the president's prerogative. It's not me. It's a constitutional matter. He has his discretion. All but right. me cannot sit here and say that he should go or he shouldn't go. I beg you. All right. So still on our former president Mahama's uh, lecture, he believes cabinet and the economic management should be re constituted from where you sit, wouldn't you agree that some but, new but, energy but can help government? Case, if that is the case, then former President Obama is not be giving the second note. Because when we're not having a world global crisis and all these things, he messed up with our economy. As a social democratic person, he even cancelled teachers and nurses allowances, education and health sector, very key in any development jurisdiction or what economic jurisdiction. I mean, high inflation when the whole world, I mean, we have average in inflation of Inflation of sorry about 1.5. Yeah. Ours was about 15.5. Interest rate hitting 40 percent. Policy rate, government owned interest and Sunday number was about 30. Sure. So why does he want to come again? All right. So if he uh, wants to do Doc, politics, then he shouldn't even attempt thinking of becoming the president again because he had a better time than us. All right. He messed that up. Sure.
All right, thank you very much, Dr. It's Stephen Amahuza, a member mother. of a Finance uh, Committee. But also on the phone is Sarah Mkawa, who is a senior lecturer in economics at the University of Cape Coast uh, Business uh, School. Uh, Sarah, good morning. Thank you so much for your time. Good morning. Thank you, too. Now, do you agree with uh, former President Mohammed's general assessment of the economy? Okay. All right. Um, li listening to uh, the first speaker, Dr. Amwa, uh, it, it looks like he wants to play down on the suggestions made by the former President of the Republic of Ghana mm -hmm. on the suggestions that he has made uh, yesterday and try to proffer his own suggestions by rehashing what the former president has said. Mm -hmm. I, I'm sure he is part of the MPP and part of the finance committee. And he said that we should put the country first. And I believe that statement is profound, that we need to put the country first. And yeah. so all the suggestions by the former president yesterday, I would have wished that this suggestion came from the president of the Republic of Ghana. And that will actually push us forward. Uh, listening to the former president yesterday, mm -hmm. uh, he did not actually put the entire blame on the poor management of the economy. But then there are external factors and internal factors that have affected us. And so the entire assessment he has done yesterday were things that we all have been speaking about. We've been suggesting these particular issues over time. And then it looks like the government is not listening to anyone. Yeah. The issues that have been addressed by the former president in his speech some uh, weeks uh, before this very one came up. Mm. My third aspect of the whole thing that we are witnessing today is that there is no communication between the former uh, president's office, the minority party, the majority, and the ruling government, uh, where we do not have to see the former president coming to address the nation on some of these issues. Yeah. It could have been done behind closed doors, where the parties meet and they prefer suggestions to the issues at stake. Uh, we hope and we pray that going forward, that kind of link can be established so that when issues are affecting the country, we will all come together as one and then we move forward. Sure. Most of the suggestions made by the former president, not most, all the suggestions are laudable suggestions. If we actually implemented it, it will go a long way to help us. He has been there before. He had experienced the issues, and he had experience. In fact, in terms of seniority, he is a senior to President Akufuado and Dr. Paomia because he has been there earlier on before. And for that matter, he had a lot of experience, and he can advise, and we should take whatever he told us yesterday, looking at what all professionals have said and yeah. all the rest. They fit into what he has said to us yesterday. And I'm hoping that the President of the Republic of Ghana, when he's coming to speak to us uh, on Sunday, most of these things will be on the agenda. Well, Sarah, Sarah, very quickly, do you think that the sacking of the finance minister and uh, minister in office is a good call? Will it solve our economic challenges? My, my dear, it has been a call that we have been making for a long time that, yes, the finance minister had worked in the first three years of this economy. He had performed very well. But just like a football team, mm -hmm. if you take Messi, Ronaldo, and the rest who play so well for their team and they are at their prime, yeah. they have energy to do the things they want to do. But with time, there's lack of ideas. Sure. With time... They do not have the energy to do that. The team is not performing well. Sure. So they are the staff of the team. We need a fresh link. We need fresh ideas. 
yeah. come on board to rejuvenate the team. Sure. On that call, I would prefer that the finance minister leaves the team, the uh, minister in, state, uh, in charge of uh, finance, finance and the presidency mm -hmm. should leave. I support the call by the president that All right. the economic management team must be reshuffled and some other ministers who, in our view, as a country, as citizens, not spectators, have seen that they are not performing, must also go. All right. They Thank you very much, the uh, Sarah. We have in the Unfortunately, during... Uh Due to time, uh, we cannot continue this conversation. But thank you so much for your time. That is senior lecturer at the UCC Business School, Serum Kabor. Let's do other stories now because Speaker of Parliament, Alban Bagwan, says that CD is appreciating against the dollar because of the motion filed by the minority to move, remove Finance Minister Ken Oforiata, delivering his ruling on an objection against the motion, which he admitted and now listed on the order paper. The Speaker said this should motivate MPs to take their responsibilities seriously. Parliamentary correspondent Kweko Asante reports. A foreshadowing of what is to come, Deputy Majority Leader Alexander Fenyomake raised an objection to how the censure motion had been filed and listed in the other paper. If you look at the various items one to seven, we should not forget that we are in a political space. And particularly if you look at item one, the way it has been counted, the man has already been condemned long before his head. The respondent in this matter, Mr. Speaker, the respondent in this application has already been condemned with allegations, not facts. If it is his contention, if it is his contention, that he's coming squarely within the scope of the Constitution, Articles 176 and 82. Then I then invite him to the rule that all men must be given fair here. And that too, that you cannot hide your cards in a situation like this. You are raising a serious constitutional matter. Therefore, you must put all your cards on the table. If you say, that you are merely now advertising allegations and the fact will come later. Now, Mr. Speaker, you are not being fair to the respondent who the constitution is saying that in, upon hearing the argument of the applicant, he must also be here. But Minority Leader Harun Idrisu fought back, insisting the emotion was properly filed and listed on the other paper. I expect him to be assuring me that his side will support this and by consensus, we'll save this country. We need to save this country, save its businesses. Businesses are collapsing, industry is collapsing, the Ghanaian citizens are reeling under unprecedented hardship. That must be your concern. But to say that there's nothing legal in this, okay, it is constitutional. Not just legal. But the Speaker of Parliament, Alban Bagbin, overruled the objection of the Deputy Majority Leader. I took pains to go through not only the Constitution, but the detailed provisions of our standing orders. And I had to deeply consider some of these issues that you have raised and came to the conclusion that the motion was properly drafted. Yeah. And so when you read the constitution properly and then outstanding orders, you see that no error has been made. And because of this motion, you know what has happened to the state of our city. Just because people are gaining confidence that action is being taken. The city gained some value. <laughs> and Parliament should be commended. It climbed from about 16 to a dollar to around 13. That is a serious gain for this country. And it's because there's some confidence being given to the people that 
action is being taken to rectify the wrongs. Today served as a precursor of what is to come when the motion to remove Finance Minister Ken Oforiata is debated in the House. The majority side, led by the Deputy Majority Leader Alexander Fenyo Makin, raised some objections to the manner in which the motion had been listed. The Speaker overruled him, but the argument is now set to continue. In the next seven sittings of Parliament, the notice will appear on the other paper, after which MPs will be expected to debate and vote on it. Remember, Finance Minister Ken Oforiata himself will be offered opportunity, if he so wishes, to defend himself against the claims that have been made against him by the minority. He has some lifeline now, though, because the pressure on his back from his own members of parliament has reduced a bit since they now acceded to the request of the president to wait until he presents the 2023 budget and also concludes the negotiations with the IMF. Away from that, illegal miners have launched fresh attacks on forest reserves in the Ashanti region, despite the government's ban on small-scale mining in forests and water bodies. Illegal miners have invaded the Apam Prama and Odo reserves with heavy earth-moving equipment, destroying several forest covers with impunity. Officials of the Forestry Commission are shocked at the level of destruction, and Homing Terra has more in this report. Forest Reserve, situated in the Amasia Central and West Districts in the Ashanti region, covers 36.28 kilometers. The Oda Reserve, on the other hand, measures 16,000 hectares. Until the recent government's ban on small-scale mining in river bodies and forest reserves, the two reserves were hotbed for illegal mining operations. Mining in those reserves appeared to have ceased completely and mined lands reclaimed. But it appears it was short-lived. Increased mining activities in the reserves mean deforestation with forest land changing to bare lands. Forestry Commission officials led by the Deputy Chief Executive Mata Kweyi and Ashanti Regional Manager Clement Omari were shocked to learn of the latest devastation caused to the reserves. That anti galamse operation saw the arrest of two Chinese nationals. The Forestry Commission puts the current destruction in the Oda Reserve at about 20 hectares, similarly to 1,600 standard football pitches. The situation is very horrible, and I think something must be done to it. Mr. Omari tells Joy News the level of destruction, especially in the Apramprama Forest Reserve, is horrible. If you look at the stent of destruction, then uh, the only word I can use is the, uh, it's very horrible. Uh, if you look at the way people have taken the law into their own hands without entry permit, going to the forest reserve, a gazette forest reserve, and doing all these things, which is not encouraging at all. So we need to sit up and ensure that all those recalcitrant uh, operators are eliminated from the place. According to Mr. Omari, the fight against illegal mining cannot be won overnight with the deployment of unarmed forest gas to face off with armed illegal miners. He is calling for support from local assemblies, traditional authorities and politicians to back West with action to the fight against illegal mining. Forest Commission, uh, the politicians, landowners, district assemblies, all and sundry, we all need to sit up and ensure that the right thing is done. Even though Forest Commission, we are mandated to ensure that there is a sanity in the place, but we, we all need hands on deck to ensure that uh, we prevent these activities once and for all. From Aprampramma Forest Reserve in the Ashanti region for Joy News, I'm Interia reporting. The Christian Health Association of Ghana, Shag, has indicated that the rising cost of living is a threat to national health security and quality health delivery. The association president, however, says they'll continue to ensure member facilities deliver quality services to its clients in this difficult time of the economy. Dr. Peter Yaboa, the president of the association, was speaking to join us at the Sardline during the 50th anniversary 
celebration of St. Joseph's Hospital in Nkwanta, South Municipality of the Oti region. There's more in this report. The fluctuation is too much. Today is 1 CD, tomorrow is 150. Health insurance is still keeping the same amount. So what they do is the suppliers will call and say, no, we are reviewing our prices. So some of the things we have ordered for till now, they have not supplied them because there have been changes, rise, rises in the prices of the, of, the, of the drugs and consumables. So they wouldn't want to commit themselves by supplying at that rate and later be caught up with the increases. That will also cost them. At the end of the day, we don't even pay them according to the stipulated time. So in fact, it is very difficult. That was Sister Georgina Kwesin, the administrator at the St. Joseph's Hospital at Nkwanta in the region, in earlier conversation on how the economy was affecting health delivery at her facility. The president of the Christian Health Association of Ghana, Chag, Dr. Peter Eboa, is confirming this fact. He says the current dollar to CD ratio is a threat to national health security, which must be addressed as soon as possible. We are jointly and severally affected. Service providers are affected and clients will always have to be called upon to make up the difference. And this is going to uh, affect utilization of healthcare services on the side of the client. It's also going to undermine the capacity of service providers to get the much needed medicines. The health dimension is a matter of national concern, matter of national health security which we must address in the nearest future. So watching Joe News Desk, up next is business. Hi, good morning. Welcome to Business. My name is Daryl Kwao. Minister of Lands and Natural Resources Samuel Abujinapo has disclosed that government is poised uh, to make Ghana a mining hub. Now, he says that the government will concentrate on building human resource base of the country to benefit the mining sector. He was speaking at the fifth national conference of human resource management in the mining industry. There's more in this report. The Minister for Land and Natural Resources has observed the need for human resource professionals to attract and retain new talent to meet the industry's future demand. Samuel Abujinapo noted the sustainability of Ghana's mining industry and the quest to make Ghana the mining hub of Africa lies in training and building local capacity. The vision of President Akufuado is to make Ghana the mining hub of Africa where all mining and mining related activities from exploration to downstream production and from research to innovation will be centered. This requires that we build a human resource base with strong local content and local participation that responds to the future needs of the industry, not only in mining, but across the entire value chain. As human resource professionals in the mining industry, you must familiarize yourself with the requirements of LI2431, particularly the localization program for the recruitment and training of Ghanaians. The conference seeks to find solutions to challenges confronting the industry, employers and labor. The theme, Transforming People Management for Sustainable Mining Industry in Ghana, aligns with the mission statement of the Ghana Chamber of Mines to use resources and capabilities of its members to deliver services to government and community needs to enhance sustainable development. Suleiman Akoni is Chief Executive Officer of the Chamber. Effective people management is intrinsically linked to corporate performance and sustainability. And the need for HR practitioners to constantly update themselves in managing employees. Human resources is the central pillar of any organization's success. And the chamber is keen to see the attraction and retention of the best talent in our industry. Managing Director of Anglo Gold Ashanti Obwasi Mine, Dr. Eric Esubontin, advised stakeholders in the mining industry to nurture industry workforce practical skills and modern mining methods. 
he revealed AGA is taking practical steps with MAC partners in developing local capacities in the Oboise enclave. Here in Oboise, we have taken practical steps to collaborate with MAC partners, a local company, to make good use of our old but well-equipped training facilities to commence a program to train and equip the youth with the needed skills in engineering trades, trackless mining equipment operation, metallurgical operations, and specialist modern mechanized underground mining equipment. Anita Sewa Ajugan reporting. And that's uh, business. Thanks for watching. The news continues after this break. You're welcome back to Joy News Desk. Uh, and I'm nervous because one of my favorite people is in studio. <laughs> Spikey, good morning. Hey. How are you doing? Good morning. I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Uh, there's drama at Twitter. Well, there's like, I, is it drama or has the drama been resolved? <laughs> well, okay. Number one, the drama has been resolved and drama has begun. Okay. So there was drama before, drama yeah. during, and drama uh -huh. after. Mm -hmm. Drama before meaning that Elon Musk said, hey, Twitter, I want to buy you. I want to take you private. I want to free the bird, take yeah. it out of the cage, mm -hmm. and make it private. And then Twitter says, okay, we're ready. Buy us. Yeah. Then Elon Musk says, more drama. You know what? I don't think I want to buy you again because uh -huh. I think you've been lying to me. Yeah. Then goes into court because mm -hmm. Twitter says, you can't deceive us like that. You can't promise to marry me. And then when you are ready to marry you me, don't, you say you won't do yeah, it. Yeah, the same way you did with me. I have continued. <laughs> <laughs> and then we went to court, they went to court. <laughs> and some way, somehow, Elon Musk, I don't know if he thought that he wasn't going to win the case mm -hmm. or if it came across that he was going to lose. So eventually just decided that, you know what? I'm going to buy it. And yeah. Thursday, yesterday, he bought, he bought it. it. finally. And took a sink in and said, let that sink in. So, so do we know what that means uh, for Donald Trump? Well, what it means for a lot of people who've been banned by mm -hmm. Twitter is that there could be a possibility of Elon just saying, you know what, let them all back in. Let this whole thing stop. Mm. I want it to be a free platform. Anyone can say what they want, you know. And, um, Elon Musk, Andrew Tate, anyone who has different opinions can come back because, yeah, it's a free speech um, platform, which is what Twitter has always been touted as. Yeah. And so that means that anybody can speak what they want to speak, speak their mind and everything. So, and it also, there's more drama, okay. during, which means, which is that he fired a couple of people. Number one being the CEO of Paraga, um, Aga, Agrawal. Okay. I hope I got the name right. We hope so too. Uh -huh. <laughs> he was the CEO of Twitter and he has been fired. Obviously because he had some misunderstandings with Elon Musk. Musk, yeah. Yeah, so... And the CFO has been fired, and some top execs have been fired. Okay. That's so very interesting. That is very interesting. But from one social media app to another, let's go to Facebook. Yes. So well, Mark owner, social media app owner. Yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. So Mark Zuckerberg, mm -hmm. owner of Facebook, has mm -hmm. lost a lot of his net worth. He's down by $11 billion. The fact is that he has lost actually $100 billion in a year. Now let that sink in, a hundred billion dollars of net worth. How, how, many, how many billion dollars could solve Ghana's problems already? Uh, unless we ask the um, economic management yeah. team. We should, just go and, we should just go and borrow money from you know, some of these tech bros and tell them that, hey, come and solve our problems. Okay, yeah. You know, because it seems they have money. If they can be just losing money, like but losing $100 billion. Another person who lost money is Kanye West. Yes, yeah, he's losing a lot of money he's because he's losing been... endorsements because of his anti-Semitic comments on and social media. And all of media. that, yeah. yeah. All right, the last one in 30 seconds. The last one in 30 seconds. Uh -huh. How fast does your phone take to charge to 100%? I, I'm not sure. Okay. Uh -huh. There's a phone that's coming out from Xiaomi, Redmi, and it takes nine minutes to get to 100%. Are you serious? 110 watt charger. 
I've experienced a 120 watt charge and uh -huh. I know how fast that is because I could get my phone to 100% in 20 minutes. This will do 100% yeah. in nine minutes. Okay, what can you do in nine minutes, Spikey? I'll find out this weekend. Uh, it's now time for Joy Sports. <laughs> And it's now time for sports, and uh, we're talking Ghana Premier League, right? Tell me about it. If, if you're a football fan in Ghana, you should uh -huh. be happy because the league returns this weekend. Okay. You know, it took the court decision to take the Premier League back and forth, mm -hmm. but now we have clearance, and then the league resumes this weekend. Okay. Two games to look forward to. The local derby in Kumase mm -hmm. between Asante Kotoko and Ken Faisal. Okay. You know, Ken Faisal hasn't started the season so well. They've lost all their games mm -hmm. and then they're struggling. Mm -hmm. Kumasi and Tokotoko have a game in hand as well. But then aside that, they, they've still won a game and then have another draw. So they're on four points. Mm -hmm. A win this weekend will take them to seven points, which means they are almost at, at the top. Hearts of Folk, after changing the, new, uh, after changing the coach, yeah. will be facing BBN Gold Stars. Mm -hmm. Last season, they lost one and then won one against this same team. Mm -hmm. So it will be good for them. In other fixtures, Bicham United play Kotoku Royals. Okay. So Atreman, Karela United, Dreams FC, and then Akal Lions are on. Okay. Mediama and then Indiana also go head to head. Legon City's face become Chelsea. Samatex and then Olympics battle it out. While Temali City and Real Temali United also face off. Okay. That's it's a, a cracking game in Tamale because it's a local derby as well. Okay, so okay. So if, if you're in the north, probably that's, that is one game you should look forward to. I'm excited because the Ghana Premier League, when it returns, mm -hmm. sees excitement on the face of Ghanaians and then yeah. sometimes even despite the economic hardship, mm -hmm. you try to take your mind off and then enjoy some football games. Uh, enjoy some football games. All right, thank you very much. Uh, so you said you're looking forward to the Tamale City FC yes. and the Real Tamale, Tamale yes. United and then FC. Ken yeah. Faisal and then Asante Kotoko. King Faisal. You know I'm a Asante Kotoko fan, right? Well, I am too. Oh, are you? Oh, I shouldn't shout. Okay, but I'm like, I'm like one of the biggest supporters. I'm an international supporter of Asante um, Kotoko. Are you already on the Fabu census? Oh, we are working on it. Let's talk on that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'll be on it by the end of today. All right. Yeah? All right. Okay, thank you so much for the much. update in the world of sports. And that how, is how we end Joy News Desk. My name is Mapita CBD. For more news, you can log on to myjoyonline.com. I'll see you at 12 o'clock for Joy News today.